Write a two column proof. Given angle one is supplementary to angle three and angle two is supplementary to angle three, prove angle one is congruent to angle two. To begin this two column proof, first start with the given information. You are given that angle one is supplementary to angle three and angle two is supplementary to angle three. Next, by the definition of supplementary angles, you can state that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees and the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. Now, because the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three and the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three both equal 180 degrees, you can use the transitive property of equality to state that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three. Next, by the subtraction property of equality, you can subtract the measure of angle three from both sides of the equation to get the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. Finally, by the definition of congruent angles, you can state that angle one is congruent to angle two. This shows that angle one is congruent to angle two, completing the two column proof. Name the property that the statement illustrates. A, angle A is congruent to angle A, and B, if segment PQ is congruent to segment JG, and segment JG is congruent to segment XY, then segment PQ is congruent to segment XY. In part A, the statement shows that an angle is congruent to itself. In this case, angle A is congruent to angle A. When you look at the list of properties of angle congruence given to you in this section, you can see that this statement resembles the reflexive property of angle congruence, which states that for any angle A, angle A is congruent to angle A. Therefore, this statement illustrates the reflexive property of angle congruence. In part B, the statement shows that if one segment is congruent to a second segment, and if the second segment is congruent to a third segment, then the first and third segments are also congruent. In this case, if segment PQ is congruent to segment JG, and segment JG is congruent to segment XY, then segment PQ is also congruent to segment XY. When you look at the list of properties of segment congruence given to you in this section, you can see that this statement resembles the transitive property of segment congruence, which states that if segment AB is congruent to segment CD and segment CD is congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is also congruent to segment EF. Therefore, this statement illustrates the transitive property of segment congruence. Write a two column proof for the reflexive property of angle congruence. Given angle A, prove angle A is congruent to angle A. To begin this two column proof, first start with the given information. You are given an angle named angle A. Next, by the reflexive property of equality, you can state that the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle A. Finally, by the definition of congruent angles, you can state that angle A is congruent to angle A. This shows that angle A is congruent to angle A, completing the two column proof. Write a two column proof. Given ray MP bisects angle LMN, prove two times the measure of angle LMP equals the measure of angle LMN. To begin this two column proof, first start with the given information. You are given that ray MP bisects angle LMN. Next, by the definition of angle bisector, you can state that angle LMP is congruent to angle NMP. Now, by the definition of congruent angles, you can state that the measure of angle LMP equals the measure of angle NMP. Next, you can use the angle addition postulate to add measures of adjacent angles. By the angle addition postulate, the measure of angle LMP plus the measure of angle NMP equals the measure of angle LMN. Now, because the measure of angle LMP equals the measure of angle NMP, 
you can use the substitution property of equality to substitute the measure of angle LMP for the measure of angle NMP in the equation in step 4. Finally, you can use the distributive property of equality to rewrite the left hand side of the equation as 2 times the measure of angle LMP. This shows that 2 times the measure of angle LMP equals the measure of angle LMN completing the two column proof.